Lissa Productions. Welcome back to Experimental Physics and our series of experiments involving radioactivity. This experiment is aimed at discovering how much material is required to completely block the beta particles from a radioactive source. And at the same time, you'll be able to get the scattering probability for gamma rays in the material. So the basic idea, of, as usual, we measure the background radiation independently before bringing the source into play and correct all of the data for the presence of background then what we'll do, as we did for the gamma radiation experiments, we'll plot the natural log of the corrected count as a function of thickness of material. But now you'll see two different features to the plot. The early data involving very thin pieces of material will indicate how much material is required to stop the beta. So we have, at first, both beta and gamma radiation for this early part of data. And once you put in enough material to completely block the beta particles, all you're left with are the gamma rays. So the latter portion is just gamma. And what we'll do is to come up with a technique for doing the measurements and doing the analysis in such a way that you will discover exactly how much thickness is required to stop the betas. We'll call this the range of betas, R. And once the beta points are removed, what remains is a set of data representing only the gamma rays. That should follow the exponential function that we saw earlier for the absorption of gamma rays in material. So we can do a fit to this portion of the data, and the slope of that tells you the scattering probability for gamma rays in the same material. So. What we need to do is set up the counter as you've done before, set it to the proper operating voltage, and then count the background radiation with no source present. So keep the source far away from the instrument when you're measuring the background radiation. Check to be sure before you start the experiments that you have completely removed this chunk of plexiglass. That will stop the beta particles and defeat the whole purpose of the experiment. So remove the shelf and the plexiglass beta filter, just set that aside. Then we'll begin with our radioactive source. Place that. Uh, this source needs to be placed with the back side facing up. It's an artifact of the design of this sealed source. The radioactive material is a little bit closer to the back face of the source. So if you place it with the back side facing up, you'll get more of the beta particles. If you put it with the label side facing up, that will stop a significant amount of the beta. So be sure that you put the source with the back side facing up. And then do a count with no absorbing material in between the source and the detector. Then we'll start with these very thin pieces of polyethylene, which you'll find in an envelope. The thickness of each sheet is marked on the label. So we'll take one of these thin pieces and place that right on top of the source and do a count. Then reset the counter and place another thin sheet of polyethylene and, and so forth. Uh, maybe put in a few pieces at a time and do a number of counts until you've got the entire stack of thin sheets of polyethylene right on top of the source. Once you have counted for all the thin sheets, just leave them in place and add to them these thicker pieces of material. So start off with one thick piece right on top and do another count in the same time interval. Then another piece and so on until you've got the entire stack of thick pieces right on top of the thin pieces. And just plot the entire set of data on the same graph, taking the natural log of the corrected count. What will happen if you put this set of data into the least squares fitting program the computer will be perfectly happy to give you a straight line to any set of data, no matter how bad the data set happened to be. So this is clearly not a straight line. 
what you can do is look at the value of chi-squared. So we'll gradually chop out the early set of data. The, the initial fit will perhaps look something like this, which is clearly not a good fit to the data. So begin to remove the early data corresponding to the thin sheets of absorbing material and redo the fit that will gradually change the slope of this line and it will improve the value of chi-squared. You want to get a reduced chi-squared that's as close to one as possible. So when you are satisfied that you've optimized the value of chi-squared, the last data point that you chopped out of the set is the range for the beta particles and the slope of the remaining set of data is the scattering probability for the gamma rays. So you get two things for the price of one by fitting the entire set and then gradually removing the early data until you're satisfied that you have a fit of good quality. So as always, I'd like to remind you to keep your exposure to radiation as low as reasonably achievable. And the three common sense ways of doing that are to maintain proper distance, uh, don't be any closer to the source than you absolutely need to be in order to do the work. Work efficiently to minimize the time of exposure. So do your work, plan what you're doing ahead of time, do it quickly and efficiently, and return the source to your instructor as soon as you are finished. And finally, if you need to be near the source for a prolonged period of time, make sure that there is some sort of shielding between your body and the source of radiation so that the shielding material absorbs the radiation rather than you. So keep your exposure to radiation as low as reasonably achievable when doing all of these experiments.